Apple just announced all the new features coming to iOS 17 this fall to everyone, which includes a new contact poster, standby mode for iPhone, interactive widgets, lots of update to messages, and more. But I'm running the iOS 17 beta on this iPhone, and I want to show you my top five features. Number one, in iOS 17, Apple's going to let you create a contact poster. When you go into the Contacts app and select your card, you'll now be able to select a new contact photo and poster image. This will appear when you call someone else. Not only can you set a larger image to represent yourself on phone calls and even airdrop, you can also change the topography behind the picture and the color of the letters as well. Once you've set your poster, you can choose a different crop for the actual profile image. And now whenever you share your contact information, airdrop, or call someone, this is the poster that they'll see if they're running iOS 17. There'll also be a new name drop feature in iOS 17 where you can just put your iPhone near another, select the mobile numbers and email addresses you'd like to share as a contact card, this way, it will share your profile image, poster, and your contact info all at once. Next up is standby mode. When your iPhone is charging in landscape mode and stationary, you'll now have a standby display where you can customize the widgets and even home controls that appear on the lock screen. But now you can tap and hold on either side. You basically get two large widget areas, and you can select widgets, all the ones that you would use on the home screen, you can use here on the standby mode screen. That includes things like home controls, now playing screens for podcasts and music, batteries, calendars, all the normal widgets you can use here in standby mode. Then I can also swipe through my widgets that I have here in the stack. Here I have my calendar, back to weather. There I can put a large clock. If you want to do a world clock, you can do that as well. Really nice standby features. And you'll also be able to put HomeKit controls. Here I can even control one of my HomeKit devices right from the standby screen when my iPhone is on its charger. And if you have an iPhone 14 Pro with an always on display, then this will just show all the time. You won't even have to tap the screen to wake it iOS 17 is also bringing interactive widgets. So not only will widgets display information on the home screen, but you'll be able to interact with them without having to launch the app. For instance, I can have my podcast widget here on the home screen and I can hit play right from the widget and you don't even have to open the app to actually press play. I can also pause it right from the app. If I have the reminders app over here, I can check and mark an item as done without opening the app and I can uncheck it. This also works for the music widget right here. And you can actually control your HomeKit devices right from your home screen widgets, including scenes and devices, so you don't have to open the app or go to Control Center. So nice to see HomeKit widgets here in iOS 17. There will also be an API for developers to add this interactivity to their widgets with iOS 17. There are some huge updates coming to Messages with iOS 17 as well. If I jump into the Messages app, I can jump into a conversation. There's now much more powerful search in Messages. I can actually search just a specific conversation, so I can choose Messages just from me, and then I can put in a search term and it will just show me messages from that one conversation with that search term enabled. This should make finding what you're looking for in messages much faster. Also, those voice memos you get that you've had to listen to before, Apple will now transcribe those in iOS 17. So you don't have to listen. You can just read the transcription right there in the message thread. Also, if you're sharing your location with someone, either in Find My or iCloud Family, it will actually display the city they're located in right there underneath their profile image in the conversation. All the messages apps they used to clutter underneath the composition window, those are now all behind the plus button. Really nice design here. And there's a new check-in feature in message conversations. When you enable check-in, you can actually let a friend know when you've arrived home or to a specific location via check-in. It will keep their iPhone updated to your progress when you should be arriving and will even notify them if you're delayed. You can choose to share either limited location, which will also share your battery level and cellular connectivity, or you can share the full information, which will show your entire route and even the location of your last iPhone unlock with the person in conversations. They'll be notified that you've added them to this check-in feature. They'll know when you arrive at your destination. And if you're delayed a significant amount of time from reaching your destination, they'll receive a notification of that too. Then you can just send the check-in right here from messages. Also in large threads or big group conversations, there'll be a new arrow called catch up. When you tap that arrow, you'll jump up to the last message that you have unread. You'll also be able to swipe across a message to reply in line and even more updates to stickers and other features and messages. Also, this didn't make it into the keynote at all, but Apple is bringing big changes to the Apple Podcast app. Again, not only do you get the interactive widget where you can play and pause right from the app, but jumping into the podcast app, when you're playing a podcast, you can now view your up next queue and reshuffle your episodes easily, way better than the previous up next experience in Apple Podcasts. Apple will also show you custom episode artwork right here on the episode's listing page. So here I have custom artwork for this episode and you can actually see it right there. Then when you play that episode, the custom artwork will show here on the now playing screen. Also nice updates to the listen now section. You have these nice cards per episode. You can just click play on whichever episode you'd like to go to. Also it shows that custom episode artwork under the listen now section as well. 
And there's even a ton more updates coming to iOS 17. You'll be able to view live transcriptions as someone leaves you a voicemail, and you can still decide whether to accept the call even then. If someone doesn't pick up your FaceTime call, you'll be able to leave them a quick video message. This is a huge one too. If you started an airdrop, maybe with lots of photos and video files, and you have to leave the person's proximity, airdrop will continue over the internet. So it won't fail just because you're separated. A new journal app is coming to iOS 17 that will incorporate things like your photos, locations, music, and podcasts. You'll be able to autofill verification codes that are sent to your email, and you'll be able to share passwords with trusted contacts. Still wish they had made a standalone password app, but I'll take shared passwords. You'll be able to download maps for offline viewing. And if you want to stop saying, hey, you can just say Siri, and that will activate the voice assistant. You can also adjust that in settings if you feel it triggers a little too often. You can go back to just listening for, hey, you know who, or can listen for both. You'll be able to find recipes from dishes just from taking a photo. And two of my favorite additions, you'll be able to see activity history in the home app for those who unlock a door, open the garage, and you'll finally be able to share air tags or other Find My Devices with up to five other people. So they're not just locked to your device. So those are some of my top features from iOS 17. Lots more announcements, including the Apple Vision Pro headset. Yes, Apple actually launched a headset, $3,500, and it's not coming till early 2024. But if you'd like more information on that, leave it in the comments. Also, let me know what's your favorite feature in iOS 17 in the comments below. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.